All right, I'm going to welcome everybody to another meeting of the Rotary Club of Livermore. And uh, I ask everybody to just hold on tight today. We're gonna mix things up uh, because our program presenters today need to get back to school. So we're gonna start with the pledge and then jump forward to our presenters from um, Kids Teach Tech and then go back to the rest of our meeting. And I know all of you are very used to being flexible through this past year. So it's a skill set we've all developed. So first, I would like to invite um, Bill Nebo. Would you be willing to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Unmute yourself and everybody else keep themselves on mute. Bill. Sure. Can you hear me? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Bill. And now I'd like to invite our president-elect, Ken Prine, to introduce today's program. Sorry about that, I had to unmute. So it is my pleasure to introduce Arjun Mulchandani, founder and CEO of Kids Teach Tech. Kids Teach Tech is a recent recipient of a grant from the Rotarian Foundation of Livermore. Kids Teach Tech is a nonprofit organization that empowers youth to seize the technology opportunities of their future. Kids Teach Tech is a team of young people who have created and taught online and in-person coding classes and summer camps to over 1,500 students in their communities ac across the country and around the world. Also joining us today from Kids Teach Tech team are Eli Beezer, Beezer? Eli, apologies if I've mispronounced your last name. Eli is the Director of Teaching Strategy and Mentorship. And Naya Heider, the Director of Girl Empowerment. Ken Maxey, uh, Board Chair, and Sarbani Mulchandani, the President and Executive Director. Now, please join me in giving a warm Rotarian Club of Livermore welcome to our speaker, Arjun Mulchandani. Thank you so much. Um, I'm actually going to quickly screen share because um, I'll be introducing Kids Teach Tech um, and sort of telling a bit of a story here. Um, again, Thank you so much for inviting uh, me, Eli, and Anaya um, here to the Zoom session. I'm really, really honored. Um, I'm going to be sharing this, uh, sharing the story of Kids Teach Tech, um, our experiences here, and talk about the future. So it all started three years ago when I was 10 years old on the way to my favorite computer science class at UC Berkeley. I was arguing with my sister, as I usually do, um, and my mom, frustrated, says, not only do I drive you so far, but this camp is really expensive. I was shocked to find out how much. I realized that less fortunate kids could not have the same camp I, know, I knew and loved and would not have the same opportunities in the future full of technology. I thought for a moment, and then I said, I can teach them. I kept thinking about this over the next few days. And I decided I was gonna start a company, teach programming to kids that didn't have enough money to help them on a path to a better future. You might also be wondering why a company? Well, my dad was actually at Stanford at the time. And also he was talking all about starting companies and how to do it and giving people advice on it. So I thought, you know what, wouldn't it be cool? So I stayed up late creating classes with lots of fun hands-on exercises to keep students engaged, and I got my first opportunity at Oakland Charter High School. After my second Python programming class overflowing with 35 students, two 14-year-old girls came to me, and they said that tech was too hard for them, and that they were going nowhere near it. With a 10-year-old standing in front of them, they had no excuse, and now they knew they could do it. This is when I realized I could truly help others and impact others and Kids Teach Tech was born. So we have a pretty unique teaching model and our teaching model is unique in a way because it, in, it combines in-person teaching um, with sort of like a tutoring approach. Um, while one main teacher 
um, one lead teacher is standing in front of the classroom. Many teaching assistants are sort of gathered throughout the main students, helping them through and sort of giving them individual attention and making sure that they get the concept. So especially with the amount of hands-on we have in classes, this is really valuable. Next, we caught the attention of Andrew Peterson, who's the CIO of the city of Oakland. He gave us all the opportunities to teach at City Hall, invited the director of libraries, and she was very impressed, and invited us to teach at all libraries across Oakland. The director of Oakland Parks and Recreation also did the same, and were confirmed to be the sole technology partner for Oakland Parks and Recreation summer camps, but could not because of COVID-19. So next, Andrew Peterson introduced us to Ken Maxey, who is here today, our chairman of the board. And he helped us to establish partnerships with Comcast, Boys and Girls Club, Urban League, and Wente Foundation for the Arts. Ken also had Kids Teach Tech present to 2,000 mayors and city leaders across California at the League of Cities Conference in 2019. This all led to an amazing growth. Our Kids Teach Tech mission has evolved to empowering youth around the world to create and teach classes to their communities. By one year ago, we have taught over 50 classes to students. Then came COVID. Ilila will talk more about our incredible pivot to online classes, but to sum it up, we experienced explosive growth and have now taught over 150 classes and full-time summer camps to over 3,000 students in Oakland, the Bay Area, the United States, and internationally. We've been teaching directly for schools in Oakland, New York, and now have certification programs and a group which we call Coder Club, where kids learn to code their own custom games and projects with us. So I'd just quickly like to mention, I'm just going to be passing off to Eli right after I say this. Um, we, have a, we have a team of 50 amazing kids dedicated from all ages um, and also a leadership team of 12 senior members. And now I'm going to pass it off to Eli um, to just say a bit about our transition to online learning. Okay, um, well, thank you, Arjun. Um, that was great as always. Um, so my name is Eli. Um, here, I'll turn my video on. Um, hi, uh, I'm Eli, um, 14 years old. Um, and sorry if there's like a noise in the background, I don't know what that is. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience with Kids Tech. Um, as well as um, our um, journey um, to online learning. So here goes. All right. Kids Teach Tech is an organization that allows kids of all ages to teach and learn from their fellow kids. It is an organization that strives to level the playing field in technological studies through free camps, classes, and more. As someone who has been a part of the team for two years now, I want to tell you my look into this inspiring organization. And in order to have a complete perspective, I want to start from the beginning. In the summer of 2019, my father hosted his yearly exchange program that brought college students from Kahoku, Japan um, to Berkeley to learn about youth engagement in local community. Every year, they have a speaker that comes to talk about their way of going about this. And last year, my father chose Arjun. He invited me, sorry, there's some noise in the background. Um, <laughs> he invited me to come to the speech that Arjun was giving and told me a bit about his teach tech. I was curious and decided to attend. The talk was held in one of UC Berkeley's lecture halls, and I can remember distinctly seeing a kid walk up on stage in front of a hundred plus college age students and deliver a powerful speech about his organization. A kid, someone my age. After that, I knew I had to join. As I look back on that day, I realized what made me so interested and excited about Kids Teach Tech. I was encouraged to join, of course, by the amazing mission but what really enthralled me was how Arjun acted during the speech. I know it sounds strange, but by the way that he showed his drive and commitment to Kids Teach Tech and the level of professionalism in which he delivered the speech was honestly amazing to me. Through this year, I have seen Kids Teach Tech grow so much. I remember my first few in-person classes and I remember that fundamental connection between a kid and another kid. Like the rest of you, I also remember the day that I was told about a little thing called COVID-19. Kids Teach Tech had an incredible boundary that day. We could no longer hold our classes. Our summit was canceled. It really did seem like there was no way out. However, 
to that incredible commitment that the entire team has who turned this obstacle into a pole vault, launching Kinsey's Tech into a new era of teaching where we are able to reach so many kids from all over the world. Kids Teach Tech will continue to explore many paths for growth, and there are so many things that we've already done. To me, one of Kids Teach Tech's biggest strengths is our ability to implement our friend teaching method, to form connections with our students that are real, and that make them want to keep taking our classes or even join our organization. In fact, we've had a huge flux in new members, and in relation to this, we've created the Kids Teach Tech Mentorship Program, which I have personally spearheaded. We look to help our newer members of Kids Teach Tech feel engaged and find their place in our organization. And so far, we have had vast successes. All in all, I think Kids Teach Tech is going to be always and forever this group of committed kids that want to help people, growing more and more by the day. It will remain an organization that was so interesting to me the moment I heard about it. And as a member of the team, I am so excited for you to join me in this mission. Thank you so much, Eli. Um, I'd actually quickly like to move on and then we'll get to Anaya next and hear her perspective on Kids Teach Tech. So just a quick update. At this point, um, we have been honored in Diablo Magazine as 2020 Agents of Change for our dedication and impact um, before and during COVID-19. So we would love to partly, uh, partner more closely with Livermore Rotary Club and here are some areas that we could use more help um, and we would love to hear uh, your ideas too. Um, a majority of us live in the Tri-Valley and would love to teach more students in Livermore through schools and youth organizations as we've been in Oakland through schools um, and Boys and Girls Club. We are incredibly thankful for the financial support as we've received from the Livery Rotary Foundation. And of course, we welcome any additional support as we grow and we've continued to need more funds for equipment such as laptops and robotics. And finally, we need volunteers to help with our organization. For example, like chaperoning classes we run, marketing assistance, et cetera. Let us know if anybody can help. Next, I'd actually like to pass it off to Anaya to share her perspective on Kids Teach Tech after that short little speech that I gave there. I don't know. Anaya, you can go ahead. Hi everyone, I'm Anaya Heather and I'm honored to be back at the Rotary Club today. As you know, the world is becoming more progressive and technology is a big part of that progress. Kishish Tech has been also a part of that progress by helping kids learn coding. I joined KTT about two to three years ago when they had first come to my school and similar to Eli, hearing about their mission had gotten me so interested and that's what really drew me to it. And at first I started out as a teaching assistant, then a teacher, and now I'm the director of girl empowerment. About 30% of our team is all girls, but everyone works together great. Being the director of girl empowerment, it's my responsibility to get more girls involved with KTT. Recently, we had two major events about girls in tech. One was an event with Sandy Nunez, the executive producer of ESPN Los Angeles. Alexander Spoto, a lead teacher, and I had developed a class that we taught after an interview with Mrs. Nunez. The other event was an all-girls STEAM Expo hosted by the NCRF, also known as the National College Resources Foundation. I had designed another class by myself and this time taught it with Alexandra once again, Dela Fields, Sarisha Velavon, and Tara Molchandani, who are all also lead teachers. All in all, working with KTT has been an amazing experience and I can't wait to do more. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Anaya, for your perspective on Kids Teach Tech. Um, just a quick note, if you guys have any like family members or relatives that are between like the ages of nine and 18 um, that would be able to help other kids or teens, um, please encourage them to join Kids Teach Tech. Um, it's a great opportunity for everybody. And yeah, I'll quickly talk about like what are the benefits of joining Kids Teach Tech. So as you may know, we have two of our 12 leadership team members here today. And first, actually, we're going to, um, actually give me a couple seconds. We're going to head back over here um, and hold up. Sorry about this. I'm pretty sure I got something mixed up here. Okay, 
Anyway, so the benefits of joining Kids Teach Tech are making an impact in your community, learning basic and advanced coding, help teaching classes to youth, making an impact in your community, um, get leadership opportunities by joining the leadership team and hosting as a lead teacher, and also learning teaching techniques from Stanford Education as we've hosted multiple team meetings where we brought in Soren Razier from, yeah, Stanford Education. Overall, I hope you enjoyed hearing about our organization and we would love to work with you more. Thank you so much for your time. Arjan, do you have uh, time for just a couple questions if there are any? Sure. No, you guys have to yeah. get to class. Does anybody have any questions uh, for Arjan? Uh, Glenn, are, you're clapping uh, or did you have a question? I was just clapping. Great job, everybody. Okay. Fantastic. Inspirational. Yeah. Uh, Joel, you have a question. Uh, Arjun, thank you so much for your presentation. What languages do you teach coding in? So currently we teach coding in Python, a block okay. coding lang uh, like block coding language called Scratch uh, made by MIT. Um, we also teach classes in HTML um, and CSS and JavaScript classes are on the way. Um, and also C classes are on the way. Cool, so, yeah. thanks. Thank you. Can you okay, put somebody last... asked about uh, oh, yeah. putting your last screen up or this maybe time. Gary, you were just had some questions about that. No, I there just want to get contact I'm information. Taking a, taking a picture of the links and all that. Thank you. Great yeah. job. That's amazing, you guys. Thank you. Yep, so great. Um, and I don't see any more uh, questions. Are there any other hands? Okay, TJ. Arjun, how did you get started? How at such a young age did you become such a master of coding? Well, actually, um, that's a funny story. I actually, as I mentioned before, um, I attended a bunch of coding camps um, in which I really tried to, like in a lot of the coding camps, um, I would just sort of follow along um, and try to absorb as much knowledge as I could. And in other camps, um, which I already knew what was happening since I sort of retook a few of the camps, um, I would, I actually sort of reverted without even knowing it um, to going around the room and sort of like helping others um, with their projects. Um, and I don't know, I feel like helping others learn something actually gets, um, I don't know, it's very motivational and it helps you learn it a bit better um, than sort of just studying it from a single source um, or whatever else. Anyway, I learned it from mostly coding camps. Yeah. All right, so we have two more questions. We're gonna go with Gordon first, followed by Splen. Gordon. Hi, great presentation. Apart from coding, do you cover other technology issues uh, for kids like uh, the dangers of social media and security concerns? Um, currently we do not, um, but as you can see uh, by our, by our name, um, actually it probably wasn't that obvious, but Kids Teach Tech um, is sort of going to grow um, into sort of more Kids Teach something opportunities. Um, and when, like, you know what, in, in terms of um, like a new Kids Teach domain, um, we could even cover safety um that's an amazing idea um like kids teach safety who knows uh but currently we do not actually cover um like internet dangers as i feel like schools do cover that a bit um but that's actually an amazing idea for like a new range that we can cover yeah so we currently do not but we can all right and splint you have a question yeah, thank you, Carolyn. Arjun, um, I think I speak for everybody here that we're just amazed by you all. We're encouraged by you all. And if, you know, it, hopefully we can support you in the future, but you are missing on an incredible opportunity here. Uh, you know, you should have a nonprofit that goes kids teach tech to old Rotarians. And I think that that would be very much appreciated. Okay. Impossible job, impossible. Thank you so much. Um, and yeah, also, might, might be a yeah, revenue opportunity there. So um, I don't see any other hands up. 
So I would just echo that uh, what Splen said, we were all very inspired, uh, also inspired about just really a group of students coming together to share their passion and their knowledge with each other. Thank you for making uh, the world a better place in the way that you have. I know many of you have to get to school. So thank you very much for joining us today. And we'll reach out and people will reach out to you uh, to see how we can continue to partner with you. Cool. Also, I will look into, um, why don't we call it Rotarians in tech? <laughs> Amazing. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. So now we'll flip back to our... Uh, regular meeting in order as we turned another meeting upside down and on its head. So, uh, Michael, do you have yes. an introduction to our song? To sure, I'm not there, but, uh, and so I didn't really contribute this. Well, I guess I did, I don't know. I will have to listen to it. You but did. I, I did? Okay, yeah. I, I take the word for it. So, uh, let me introduce, uh, uh, teach your children because they will teach us, right? So here we go with, with whatever Stu's going to push right now. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, one. You who are on the road must have a code that you can live by. And so, become yourself, because the past is just a goodbye. Teach your children well, their father said, will slowly go by. And feed them on your dreams, the one they pick. The one you don't know by Don't you ever ask them why If they told you you would cry So just look at them and sigh And know they love you And you of the tender years Can't know the fears That your elders grew by And so please help Them with your youth They seek the truth Before they can die Teach Your parents well Their children's health will slowly go by and feed them on your dreams the one they fix the one you know by don't you ever ask them why if they told you you would cry so just look at them and sigh and know they Well, thank you very much, Stu and Michael, for another wonderful song and another uh, perfect selection. Though I think you're right, they did a little today. The kids are doing the teaching. And thank so you. now I'd like to invite our longtime club member, and we're glad to have him back with us today, J.R. Romero, to share his thoughts today. J.R. How's everybody doing? That was awesome, you guys. That sound really good. Anyways, um, I just like to say that um, during the past uh, year plus, we've all been presented with challenges, issues in our lives, works, workplaces, homes, families. It's not uncommon for people to be stressed, worry, or feel depressed. 
My message and thought for today is not to lose focus or perspective on the good things around us. Here are a few tips. Positive people have a happier view of life. When you count your blessings, you have a happier view of life. You're more grateful for what you have and for those around you. Researchers suggest that being thankful changes your brain for the better. It boosts your happiness and makes you a more positive person. You will feel less stressed. Counting your blessings make you feel less stressed. It's not that you don't have problems in your life, but you're able to bounce back from difficulties because your point of view is upbeat and positive. You can rebound quickly when times are tough. Stress has many adverse side effects on your mind and body. Positivity might mean you will live longer. Upbeat, positive people worry less, less stress, and generally uh, feel less stress and generally feel more optimistic about life. One study found that individuals who are confident live longer and most people up to 85 or older. They age in a healthy way because they tend to take better care of themselves with exercise and good eating. They feel positive about their future, so they live life to the fullest. Improved friendships result from a more positive outlook. Nobody likes to spend their time with a pessimist who pulls everyone down on, with their negative views. Negative people expect the worst and nothing is ever right for their life. Counting your blessings make you feel happy, <clears throat> make you uh, a happier person. People enjoy being around you because you're not down on life. You can laugh and enjoy being around your friends because you feel hopeful about your experience and want to enjoy your friendships. You'll sleep better when you count your blessings. Being grateful is a side effect counting our blessings. Grateful people worry less and consequently they sleep better for a more extended amount of time. Researchers suggest that you should write down several things you feel grateful for in life every night. They say the things you wrote down fills your mind with positive thoughts, making you feel less burdened and able to fall asleep and get a good night's sleep. Um, I have... Uh, some things that I'm grateful for. Um, I still have my mom and dad. They're both 87 years old. All my family is healthy. I still have a job to go to, still in business. Uh, it's been a struggle, but we're still here. During the last year, I have three new grandbabies. My daughter, Jessica, who's working for the Raiders, is now engaged and working for Disney Studios as a post-production coordinator. So I have a bunch of good things going on around me, despite everything uh that's going on that uh, can bring us down so my my thought is to stay positive stay focused on the good things thank you thank you very much jr a good reminder and a good message for all of us and it was great to have you with us today uh we're grateful that you are a member of the rotary club of livermore so our meeting front line for the day, uh, Jeff is our Zoom host extraordinaire. Joel is our spur reporter. Alan is putting together our AV and adapting very quickly on the fly today. Don Wentz will be publishing the spur and David is monitoring the chat. And so I know we have a few guests with us today. We'll start by introducing our visiting Rotarians. And I'd like to start by welcoming Kamal Della from the Rotary Club of Dublin. Welcome, Kamal, and you have a short announcement for us as well. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful and thankful for the for Livermore visit many times. Um, we have an event in Dublin, and I want to uh, uh, lobsters. You know, it's a cooked lobsters. We are we are delivering the cooked lobsters or pick up the cooked lobsters. On May 15, last day uh, to register is a nine. I'm gonna put the website on the chat. The website is our website, which is like we all know it. It starts with uh, rotarydublin.org. So I want to thank you know um, you know fellow Rotarian they already bought, and I apologize if I missed all those like a source he bought Kathy and and uh, uh, and Pat Coyle, and I'm sure maybe uh, you know I got the list later a few days later. So I want to thank you for your support. And uh, with that, we're going to kind of supporting the youth activity and youth program. I'm going to put the website on the chat. Again, it's rotarydublin.org. Thank you so much, President Kellen. 
All right, you're welcome, Kamal, and thank you for joining us today. And Gary Schweigerly from the Rotary Club of Pleasanton, welcome back. Good afternoon, thank you. It's nice to have you. Do we have any other um, guests or visiting Rotarians today? All right, I didn't see any. Well, I welcome if I missed you. All right, another photo from my uh, walkabout with covering all 499 miles of the city of Livermore. And this is a, a photo from about a year ago. And I'm showing this to uh, question how many of these pandemic activities will continue or have continued when we're uh, over a year out. And you'll notice here, if you see the sidewalk chalk at the back of the driveway, we saw a lot of sidewalk chalk being uh, used to just create art or share positive messages with the community members. Uh, kids playing out front a lot, bringing their inside toys outside. And then look at all that uh, lumber back there, home projects. And as we've heard, some of those ha are, ha happened at my house in this past year. But it will be interesting to see how many of these activities that took a place a lot this past year will continue yes, to the next year. And up next, I'd like to invite our new member, Dale Chorney, to share his new member talk. Dale. Hi, everyone. How's the audio? Audio Perfect, is good. Dale. It's good. It's good. Okay. Great. Well, thanks for uh, including me today. And I uh, just want to say that uh, well, my, uh, my life in, in uh, Livermore, my career started uh, a long time ago. Half, a little more than half my life I've spent in the U.S. or lived in the United States. Prior to that, I grew up in Western Canada and uh, came out of college, wanted to have a, a job in high-speed communications didn't work out so well at that particular time. So I ended up working for a computer company back in the days when you could fix computers. Nowadays, it seems to be a disposable world. And uh, after working in Canada for a number of years, I had an opportunity to had a job offer for actually from a company here in Silicon Valley. So uh, backed up the cats and the dog and my wife and two kids and uh, moved to California and uh, have enjoyed, you know, a good career in high tech here. And um, I don't know, it was very fulfilling. Had it managed to get into high speed communications as I wanted to in the beginning and data movement. But uh, I don't know if many people remember, but uh, back in the day, we used to communicate over 9,600 BPS modems. Does anybody remember that? So things have certainly changed because back then to move a, a terabyte of data, it would take you know, almost 30 years. Nowadays with the technology we have, you can do it in just a few minutes. And also back then we'd move data from you know, maybe a city here to a city in another state. Now we move data to the ubiquitous cloud. Nobody knows where your data really lives. But anyway, um, so much for that. Um, I've been in Livermore now for 11 years, moved here from Fremont. Uh, I was looking uh, to upgrade uh, my hobby space as I was looking for retirement because I believe that when you retire, you should retire to something, okay? Not from something, but retire to something. So my two space is uh, my wood shop. That's where I go out and uh, get my therapy building things. So we've been here 11 years. Uh, we've grown to love this city. And I thought now maybe I can give a little bit back. So uh, we're a blended family. Uh, we have four children, two boys, two girls. Uh, three of the kids live in the Bay Area and we've got one in Boston. So it uh, helps us do a little bit of traveling whenever we go to Boston to visit the kids there. We always tie it in with uh, uh, probably another week or two of traveling somewhere in the U.S. And so we've had a uh, good fortune then to uh, see a, a large portion of the country. There's still more to see. We've also 
visited uh, a very large portion of Canada. So Europe is still, we've done some, want to do more, but uh, you know, the COVID right now is kind of restricting things. So uh, we have two grandchildren live in uh, Alameda and we don't get to see them as much as we would because of COVID, but as things loosen up, uh, I'm sure that's going to change. So um, that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, I'm open. Otherwise, we'll let you get back to your meeting, Carolyn. All right, thank you very much, Dale. And you, I have to say you look very dashing in your yellow rotary vest and with your red badge on. Uh, we're very grateful that you chose in your retirement to do something and that part of what you chose to do is be a person of action as a member of the Rotary Club of Livermore. So thank you much, very much for joining us. And we look forward when we will all be back together. Um, up next, we are going to have a presentation from Bob Cowan about our READY program, which has also pivoted during the past year. Bob. Okay, thanks, Carolyn. So just a little bit of background first. Manuel Perry started the READY program in 2011, and the READY stands for Rotarians Educating and Directing Youth. And it turns out that's a pretty accurate description. Uh, we usually have 13 to 16 students, and we match those up with eight to 11 Rotary mentors. Uh, we were meeting every Monday at the Junction Library. And the emphasis of the program was to, to kind of focus on kids who weren't doing well in school as, as their teachers thought they should do. Not that they were uh, problem kids, but they were maybe kids that weren't getting the help from home or just weren't motivated. Of course, to do that, you have to talk a kid into coming to an after school session, a one hour after school session, which is, you know, maybe a little difficult after spending all day in school. I don't know how hot I'd have been for that. But usually we get some parental push. And also we had an incentive, and that's that we had four or five field trips each year. And these were pretty nice field trips. So the kids heard about this and, and and we were able to get the, the, the kids that needed to come. And for example, I just want to tell you what some of the field trips were. Usually the first one of the year, we'd go to Sycamore Grove, have nature interpretation, and Beth usually uh, arranged that for us. And then after the nature talk and holding bobcat skins, et cetera, we'd hike up the top of uh, Cresta Blanca Hill, which is a pretty significant walk if you've never walked that far before. So that was usually the first th thing. Then we'd go to the Exploratorium in San Francisco, and a lot of kids had never in the program had never been to San Francisco. Went to the Chabot, we go to the Chabot Science Center, we go to the Oakland Museum, which is fantastic. Lawrence Hall of Science, good science and also beautiful views. And we usually finished up the, the year with a trip to the Oakland Zoo. So over the years, the program has made a positive difference in the lives of kids. If we could go to the next slide, Alan. Here are the people that are, are, are putting their rotary uh, skills to use, helping kids, and I've got, it, got you listed there. I'm not gonna read it, uh, but I do wanna point out in blue, Lori Valenzuela, who's been our teacher for the last four or five years. When I say teacher, she's assigned by <clears throat> the school to help out with the rotary program but this woman just goes beyond and above and she was supposed to be with us today <clears throat> and unfortunately something's happened to her son and he's in serious medical condition at a hospital in santa clara and i don't know anything more about that but uh, i'll try and keep the ready mentors informed when i learn a little bit more but anyway laura has been invaluable especially this year so this year is not a normal year. Uh, we're conducting everything by Google Meets. The kids are, you know, are doing all their schoolwork, or at least they were up until a couple of weeks ago, by Google Meets. So we're our uh, our pool of kids to join the Ready program are already kind of video burnouts, and I, you know, I think the 
Lori might be a could have been a, a, a video burnout candidate as well. And on top of that, we mentors faced a real steep curve learning the interactive video of Google Meets, and we were pretty much humbled by how the kids were able to, to handle it. Uh, but we're learning, and we've, we've come a, a, a long way. Uh, and so part of the problem this year was to get, actually, to, to get kids to participate. And that's where Lori really rose above the ordinary. She was able to, because you're not, nobody is seeing anybody in person. So Lori, through video, emails, telephone calls, was able to recruit kids for the READY program and, and, and has helped keep them focused all year long. And we typically, on any session, have six to nine students participate. And you got to remember, the kids have to remember to tune in, especially to us. It's not part of the school year, so sometimes they forget. So we probably have 12 to 13 kids in the program, but usually six to nine kind of remember to show up in a given week. And, and actually, the mentor rate is about the same. We usually have six to nine mentors show up each week and that varies from week to week. It was very difficult because we had no textbooks to help help with the kids. So in math for some of us that's not a problem, but I we at least I personally found with social studies that was the problem. And field trips were absolutely off the table. Uh, of course that was one of the highlights that kept kids coming to the ready program. So this is what ready used to look like. On the left side you see the junction library. And there's Dennis O'Brien sitting in the front. I think he's with Celeste. And there's our teacher, Lori, on the right. And you can see the mentors with their kids going back table to table. Then to the left of that, there had been another row of tables going back. And then some tables scattered around where we'd have mentors and kids. And on the right, what it looks like now. This is the beginning of a session. <clears throat> this was a couple of weeks ago. And I took a screen grab. And... Uh, Lori, who's in the top middle, is explaining it's one of the kids' birthdays, and we're getting ready to, to, to sing to her. And then down in the bottom right, you see a little sign that indicates that kid's joining in. So we wait. Next slide. So the mentors, we're, the mentors are usually pretty on time. The kids, not so much. And so we wait for the bell. The mentors are there usually five minutes before class, and you can see us there. And aren't we a distinguished looking group? And you can see Lori, and maybe in some frustration here. And the bell sounds, oh, I'm sorry. So as soon as the kids come in, they're assigned to a given mentor. She takes, she does some magic with her computer and takes us to a breakout room. And the next slide shows a screenshot of me with Celeste, who's my student in a breakout room. And on the left here, you can see the lesson she we're going over. Somehow she's used Google Meets to get her review assignment up and, and we're going through uh, an assignment from social studies on the middle ages of which I got to admit, I wasn't that up to date with. Uh, she thought I might've lived in that area if I had, I had to correct her on that. One interesting fact, uh, this student is, really a mature kid. She's an uh, excellent soccer player on a traveling team. A couple of times during our sessions, I see her younger eight-year-old go doing cartwheels behind, practicing for him, her gymnastic program that she's done. And then behind her, her baby brother hanging in, a, in some sort of swing, bouncing up and down. So you kind of understand the difficulty some of the kids had uh, doing their homework or concentrating on school during the, the regular sessions. Next slide. Since we couldn't do field trips, Lori said, hey, we have to have some fun to keep these kids engaged. So she came up with this online educational game co called Cahoots. And it, it took us mentors a, a, a while to figure out how to, to configure our computers to play the game. But here it shows us getting set up, we've got the secret number, we go to another website, type that in, and it brings up these questions. And they're all educational. And some of them, we mentors actually could knew the answers. Some of them had to do with popular culture and we were clueless. 
Although, though I must admit, Lynn Seppala always amazed me. He seemed to know all the answers. Next, sli next slide shows just, uh, you know, partway through uh, one of the games we're playing, I took a screenshot. You can see the, some of the participants and not, not all the participants show up on my screen. You just see the, the default number that was the first logged in. And here's an you know, answer after one of the questions about who is the fastest bird on, on, on foot. So we played this game, I think, three times this year. We played it the whole session. And then we, Lori would tally up the winners, and it turned out, of course, everybody was a winner. And the club gave each kid a $10 gift card to, the, uh, to Target to go and do what they wanted with. So that was what we did in, in terms of field trips to keep kids interested. So I asked each of the mentors to send me a quote on what they, you know, some one liner we could do about <clears throat> ready. And I'm just going to read these to you. So when ready program graduates come back to visit and help, they're all smiles, affection, and grateful to Head Start we gave them. Actually, that was Dennis O'Brien said that, but that was also my feeling and the feelings of others. I know as well. And it turns out the ready kids actually do come back and help. And that I think really shows that the program is successful. Then Dennis said his greatest thrill was when the students tell their teacher that, that tell him that the teacher had just introduced a topic that he'd already covered the week before. Beth Wilson says she was it was deeply enjoyable getting to know her students in the confines of the home this year. And I, I got a second that. That was really interesting. Alan Burnham said a memorable experience to him was the previous year when we were at the Chabot Science Center. He discussed the setup of an electrical circuit uh, display and each of, each he, he and his student were each showing different setups to each other. And Alan said he learned something too. And he, don't, he doesn't know what kind of an impact <clears throat> that made on his student, but he certainly enjoyed the interactive experience. And he made the interesting observation I really hadn't realized, but the learning on this program truly is bi-directional. Next page, Kathy Coyle and I shared a student named Lorena uh, Fernandez, and she's actually talked to the club a couple of times. Kathy says it was as her first year as a, a volunteer, Lorena was 10 and they were studying social studies. She told me she would have been a chef if she had been on a ship. When we then chatted about weevils in the hardtack, and she said she would make porridge and they wouldn't even notice. Kathy said, I knew then she was going to places and she, and currently she's just finishing up her first year at Fresno State on some scholarships. And, you know, both Kathy and I were invited to Lorena's Cincinnati, is that the, the way you pronounce it? Uh, the party for when a, a uh, a, a Mexican child, a female child, reached uh, 15 years of age, and that was really fun to go to. Yeah, Quinceanera, Bob. Yeah. Okay, and then lastly, T.J. Martin said, "Ready kids, boys and girls are generally quite smart, and we try and get kids that are smart that just aren't doing well." He says that the Lawrence Hall of Science one boy explained to me how reptiles' eyes work and many facts about dinosaur bones. I thought I was teaching him chess, and he beat me. I also taught him set, which he also soon beat me. Kids are really good at pattern recognition. This is the same boy who is reputed to be a discipline problem, which he never exhibited to me. And I worked with him for two years. And I got to admit, we have on very rare occasion had any discipline problems with these kids. So anyway, for this year, it was a difficult year. We're, we're almost plowed through it. And we made a way to make the Brady program work. And I don't think there's not a one of us that can't wait to be with the kids in person in September, to be with them, to help them in person, and also to take them on field trips. And the last note is just to, to give a shout out to Lori Vanzuela, our teacher, who's truly a teacher extraordinaire. And I sure hope her kid, uh, whatever her young son, whatever's wrong with him, he gets, he gets well very quickly. And thank you. Well, thank you very much, Bob. Thank you for that wonderful overview of the READY program. And I know I speak on behalf of all of uh, our fellow club members who really appreciate 
your work in coordinating uh, the READY program this year and also the work of all of the volunteers, the current volunteers this year. Especially thank you that you were willing to uh, learn something new just as the kids were learning something new on uh, between Google Meet and Cahoots and that you spend this time with these students and are making such a positive difference in their lives and therefore in the lives of their families and our communities. So uh, thank you uh, for all of your effort for that. That's uh, kind of one of the, I think the READY program is one of the signature programs of our club, which we are all very proud of. Um, and some of us support it financially and then others of you supported by meeting with the students each week. So thank you very much for that update. Oh, and up next, and also to thank some Rotarians who uh, stepped up and said, uh, raised their hand. Uh, you'll recall last week, I had a call for self nominations to serve on the board of the Rotarian Foundation of Livermore. As you all um, hopefully know or may recall, is that the Rotarian Foundation of Livermore board is made up of members from the two clubs in Livermore, both the morning and noon club, and three of our club members were terming out. So Norm Bregman, Lynn Sepla, and Jeff Youngsma, all three raised their hands uh, to serve on that board. And then next week, we will be doing uh, the election to elect them to serve in that cap capacity and continue to be uh, people of action um, as board members for the Rotarian Foundation of Livermore. So thank you, Norm, Lynn, and Jeff. And Dennis O'Brien, another one of our signature programs is our RAVE program at Las Positas College. So Dennis, you have an update for us. Thank you, President Carolyn. Um, yesterday, we partnered with the uh, Morning Club uh, to hold uh, our third Kick Off Your Career workshop for student veterans at Las Positas College. Um, this is the third uh, in the series, and uh, we focused on networking and resume writing and interviews. We had a wonderful testimonial from one of the, um, the student veterans who took this workshop last October and he used these skills that we covered to secure a, a position with uh, Congressman Swallow's staff. It was really phenomenal. So I really want to uh, put a big thank you out to the, the people who were on the panel, uh, Gordon Jones and Tim Berry from our club, Beth McCormick, Eric Billy, and Deb Tacker from the Morning Club. Congratulations, they did a marvelous job. They have a lot of expertise to share. Thank you. Thank you for that update, Dennis. And as you can see, uh, our club members are people of action in many different ways. Uh, this is a save the date. You will recall that um, I shared the heartbreaking news that Rosemary Allman, a member of the Morning Club, who was um, planning to be president, the next president of the Rotarian Foundation of Livermore, passed away unexpectedly. And there will be a virtual memorial tribute to Rosemary next Wednesday, May 5th at 5 p.m. Um, and I'm sure Kathy Coyle will share that link with us for those of you who would like to uh, join that presentation. And just a reminder that the district training assembly is still in process. And so you're welcome to uh, join any of the meetings. This is a great way to find out what's happening at the district level. A number of our club members are doing presentations. Um, I'm facilitating a presentation tomorrow night on uh, virtual fundraising. And just a shout out to Kathy Coyle as the chair of this year's uh, district training assembly, who's doing a great job putting all the work together then. Uh, go on to our website, or Kathy can put in the chat, the link so that you can see directly all of the upcoming programs. And then also from the district site, get the Zoom link. You're encouraged to register, but it's not required. And you just click on the Zoom link for the session you'd like to attend. And up next week, 
another one of our programs. Wow, aren't you proud of everything that the Rotary Club of Livermore does? And another one of our programs is our music scholarships. The music scholarship committee uh, did a lot of hard work and spent a lot of time listening to uh, submissions from talented young musicians and have um, selected the recipients for this year's music scholarships funded by our club. And we will hear some presentations um, from the recipients at next week's meeting. So we are actually, even with our upside down meeting, uh, we are finished for the day. We turn things on their head. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for holding tight as we flip things around. And this concludes another meeting of the Rotary Club of Livermore. I look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye everyone. Super, super, super meeting. We have some very inspiring young students. Oh my God. They're... Yes, I guess the youngest teacher is eight. <laughs> I didn't wow. even know all of those, those coding languages. So, yeah. and, and they wow. could sure teach us a few things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was great. Well, thanks to everybody. I'll see you later. Okay. Bye, Kathy. Okay. Bye. Yeah, I know Irv, right. Glenn, and I are going to stay on for a little while. We're going to try to take care of the presentation for uh, for for him. So, okay. but I will be stopping okay. the recording, though. Okay, Have fun. Great. Bye, everybody. Goodbye.